One of the most important things to consider when you're choosing information to read is the author, or who wrote it. This could be one person, a group of people, or an organisation. Checking who they are is a very wise move. When the authors are named, ask yourself, who are they? They might be a recognised expert or authority in a subject area, or if not, perhaps, do they have relevant experience or do they work for a well-respected organisation in the right field? Often, books and journal articles will have a note of what we call an author's affiliations and their qualifications, but this can be trickier online, so you might have to do a little bit of digging. Consider me, for example. Hello. I've been working as a librarian for health subjects for nearly 10 years, so I have some expertise in this area. But what if you found something I'd written on chemical engineering, or the 18th century novel, or family law? I only have a qualification or experience in one of those areas, so it would be sensible not to trust me on the others. What about when an organisation is the author? Obviously, something like Great Ormond Street Hospital, Canterbury Christchurch University or the BBC can't actually write something, but they're known as corporate authors when they release material that isn't identified as being written by specific people. For corporate authors, ask the same questions as with individuals. What areas does this organisation work in? Are they well respected? Has anyone even heard of them? Authors or organisations with expertise in a subject area are more likely to put out accurate information. The less someone really understands something, the more likely they are to make an error which you might not pick up on. But sometimes there is no author listed, whether a person or an organisation. Something is anonymous. In these cases, you need to be cautious. If you can't verify who wrote something, how can you know whether to trust what they write? You have no way of finding out whether they really know anything about the topic, or what viewpoint they might really represent. If you do decide to use some anonymous writing, try to follow up any references they make and use that material in your assignment. Or if for any reason you really need to cite what they've written, make sure that you also refer to other sources as well, and make it clear that you're aware of the drawbacks of anonymous information. So think about who wrote the information you read. Do they have appropriate experience or knowledge? Can you trust them? Using information from trustworthy sources helps you build solid arguments on good foundations.